obviously, obviously a, a tough loss uh, for our guys. Um, you know, they, they did a, a good job of, of uh, taking away the three-point line. We tried to get out the transition um, <clears throat> against these guys. Uh, we did a good job offensive rebounding. Um, but uh, you know, where the game was won was by New Orleans, you give them a lot of credit, but we went through a stretch in the second quarter where we had, I don't know, three, four, five turnovers, if not more, that really cost us. And it was one of the things we said against these guys is you can't play in the crowd. And we played in the crowd and, and, and had some bad turnovers during that, that, that period. And, you know, that was the one quarter they won. Um, and, you know, when you turn the ball over against these guys, they're so good and get out in transition and making you pay uh, that, uh, <clears throat> you know, it's hard to play catch up uh, when that happens. But our guys, they, they, they competed. Um, they tried to leave it out on the floor. Uh, like I said, the turnovers caught up with us. Other than that, uh, we tried to get out in transition. Our second chance opportunities were good. And then you've got to give their bench a lot of credit. Um, I thought uh, uh, Alvarado and, and Nance and, and Marshall, I mean, they came off the bench and they scored a combined 34 points. And, you know, when you play in a game of this magnitude and as low scoring as this is, you know, to get 34 points from your bench, uh, tough. Uh, it's a great night for them, tough night for us. Uh, obviously, uh, you know, our two young fellas, uh, Keegan and Keon uh, struggled a little bit from, from the field. Uh, they were uh, four for, for 17 between the two of them. And, and then, you know, we had we didn't get much from Davion on the bench. But uh, I mean, we didn't get much except from Davion coming off our bench. So uh, it made it a little tough for us scoring the basketball tonight. But our guys competed. And uh, I take my hat off to them because they competed the whole season. Yeah, uh, I know it's early. But how do you take two steps back and look and see? Yeah, I mean it's it's a little tough, you know. Right now, you know, I'm still thinking about this game and the loss. Uh, but <clears throat> I do I give I give our guys a lot of credit. They faced some stuff that, uh, this season that they didn't face the season before, and and uh, they tried staying with it. Tried, battle, tried battling through it, and uh, we just came up short when we when we were hoping not to. Marjorie, you talked about the size of your roster, and it's not adding with the biggest team. We don't know what, what the offseason is going to look like in terms of roster construction and those things, but when you look forward, do, how, do, how do you envision being able to score better against some of these longer teams like the Bell? Uh, we we got to be able to get the paint. We got to be able to finish. You know, we got to have uh, we got to play with some aggression offensively. And you know, I told our group that I, I you know I thought we'd try to come out and play physical. But I thought the only area or the, that I thought we were not great in for for a whole game, obviously the turnovers hurt us. But I thought we were a little passive offensively. You know, and and we didn't we didn't. Not all of us were aggressive with our play uh, tonight, and so we we have to be able to uh, get the ball in the paint and continue. If you draw three guys, it's hard to finish over three guys. Um, so you got to play off a of two, and you got to spray it. Can't try to throw little drop passes or against this team, a team like this. Uh, but if, if you get down it, if you got a head full of steam and you're heading to the rim, you got you got to be able to finish. You got to be able to get to the free throw line and convert. And uh, um, I thought through, uh, especially early, we, we didn't do a good job with that. You know, um, so we have to be able to do better with that. Not just against these guys, but but just overall uh, going forward. Dealt with the hip on the second quarter, obviously, but it was pretty cold early on. What do you think led to that? What's your message to that? But I think that uh, kind of led to him being a little cold early on. Uh, I, I thought Keaton could have been a little bit more more aggressive. Um, you know, even um, when he didn't have the ball, he, he, you know, he was in, danced in one spot too much, and <laughs> when he's really good. If he doesn't have the ball, he might make a move, but then he's he's making a basket cut, and then he's surfacing out the other side, and 
and, and coming off of uh, DHOs trying to turn the corner and stuff like that. And uh, and I, I, he, he probably could have been a little more aggressive. I don't know what to make of the, the, the hip injury, if you were asking. But um, uh, that, uh, other than that, you know, when he's a young guy going through this, and and uh, I'm sure he, he's going to grow from it and realize what he can do better to help us going forward like everybody else can. Mike, I realize it's probably it's, it's too early to look at the season as a whole, but what about this week? It feels kind of reflective of the season, the highs and the lows, the, the Warriors winning followed by uh, this loss tonight. What do you make of this team that had such peaks and such valleys over the course of the season? What is it going to take, you think, to find kind of that consistency over the course of the just in the, my initial thing, that's, a lot of times that's what the season is. It's highs and lows. You hope you don't have too many. Um, and obviously it just gets to, uh, you just, it gets to, to really just trying to be consistent, consistent with what your approach is, consistent with how you play, um, <clears throat> you know, doing all the little things that you can to uh, put yourself in position to win. But, um, you know, let's, We'll take time to sit back and reflect them on the season as time goes on. Uh, it's obviously was a tough loss for us, and you, you know we, we we know we could have played better, but it is what it is. They beat us and uh, they they earned it, um, but we'll figure it out. We'll we'll, we'll be better next year. Well, you had mentioned the bench more. So what did you make of your performance here? Um, how do you view just sort of their seasons overall? Uh, it, you know, obviously uh, we'll look back and reflect on their overall season. But I thought they both tried. I thought they both left it out on the floor. Um, and you know, the reality of it is, that, you know, two of those guys uh, scored score 58 points, and uh, you know, HB helped out with the 17, but we didn't get much help. You know, we didn't get much help from from uh, many other guys. You know, uh, Davion came off the bench and scored 10, but uh, we need a little bit more from a few other guys in order to be able to get it done tonight, you know, because 105 points is not a ton. Uh, you know, you look at 7 for 19 from the three-point line, we did our job with the three. Uh, you know, like I said, the biggest thing is, is the turnovers. Uh, if we could take care of the ball uh, better, uh, that would have helped us out, and then been able to find ways to find to, to get some scoring someplace else other than than Fox and Domus and and uh, HB would have been good. Coach zero and six against the Pelicans this season. What is it about this matchup that maybe it's just kryptonite for you guys? Uh, I mean, you guys give it. To, they're good. They're long. They're athletic. Um, like I said, we've been hurt by the three by these guys, uh, and we turn the ball over. Uh, against these guys, and um, and and for us, uh, we have to be the aggressors offensively, but we have to do it in a way where we're taking care of the ball, you know. And and it seems like every time they go on a run, it's obviously because we're trying to thread the needle with our passes, and and our floor balance is poor, and they get out and they create separation, and they're a good team when they create separation. Uh, it's not easy to get back into into the game, and that seems like most of, most of the year that was the, the the theme against these guys. Is there's a stretch where we just uh, weren't as sharp with the basketball, and, and they made us pay, which got gave them uh, gave them momentum um, throughout the, during that time of the game, and it's hard to crawl back in. Mike, what's your overall takeaways from just the West this year? That's a 49 win team that barely made it in. I mean, the West was just so brutal this year. But having experienced it from from your seat, what do you make of just this Western Conference? Hey, hey man, it, the West is tough. Um, I, 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 don't, I don't know. I you know, again, I, I just off the top of my head, I don't know if I've seen uh, a more competitive comp conference like this from top to bottom and. Literally, I think anybody can beat anybody on any given night. Oh, I mean, you know, that's always the question. How how do you become consistent? I think uh, on the defensive end, I think that's where we have to get there. Um, Obviously, like I said, it's always you know making this league, but 
Um, if you're able to be able to be physical on that end of the floor, uh, try to keep your pace up, you know, as much as possible, then, you know, that's kind of where the consistency of your play style comes into effect. But sometimes you make shots, sometimes you miss shots. And when it comes to, you know, I mean, there are a lot of teams with length like New Orleans and throughout the Western Conference. Just what, what do you think the key is for you guys to evolve the offense so, you know, nights like tonight don't happen against the longer teams? I mean, that's a question for you know coaches and, and GMs. My, my job is to go out there uh, and try to make plays, uh, try to get downhill, try to create shots for myself, and try to create shots for uh, my teammates. And uh, just got to be able to do a better job, especially in that second half. I feel like um, I think I had a much better first half than I did second half. You guys won 46 games this season. You felt like more injuries than you did the year prior. Do you, do you view this season as a step back, or like how do you kind of view it in, in the arc of this goal? Oh, I mean, obviously there's something to build off of still. Um, I mean, the West isn't getting any easier, so um, obviously it's a disappointment not being able to be in the playoffs, not being one of those one of those top eight teams, but uh, we have something to build off of. And, um, you know, you look forward going into the next season. It seems like the defensive growth is probably the biggest part of this season to, to take away. How much better do you feel it can get? I guess, what do you make of from day one to today, the overall evolution of the defense? I mean, I think we're much better defensively towards the end of this, sort of towards the end of the season. Um, you know, just trying to be able to put full games together, I think, uh, is where we're more consistent at. And, um, you know, our season comes to an end because of it. I feel like in the, like I said, in that first half, I think we were a lot better than we were in the second half. But um, at some point, we have to be able to find that consistency in, on both ends of the court. You had Keon, uh, Keon and Keegan have such great games against the Warriors and struggled tonight. Going back to your first, second, third years in the league, what did you make of like the young player? Ups and downs that just naturally come with your development. Yeah, man, those things happen, but you have to be able to just stay the course. It's, uh, it's hard to be in this league. It's just hard. Um, nothing's going to come easy, obviously. You know, someone like Keon had, you know, went undrafted, ended up fighting for a spot, and, you know, he was in a, in a, in a play-in game starting. So, um, you know, they, they, those guys put in the work, and consistency, consistency comes with that, especially as you, as you start to get older, as you start to get used to this league. Uh, but it's never going to come easy. It's been a discussion outside of your guys' locker room this year of the offense versus defense and take one to give another, just, I guess, to set the record clear. Do you think there has to be a sacrifice on one end to focus on another? No, I just think as players, as individuals, you have to, you have to continue to evolve your game. You have to continue to get better. Um, not only just going into the offseason, what can you add to your offense, but you know, are you going to be able to guard somebody defensively? And um, I don't think that there has to be give and take. I feel like you have to, as a player, continue to evolve on both ends of the court. And, uh, you know, if you're able to do that, then you know you start looking at yourself and you start being one of the better teams in this league. I mean, all the teams that are contenders are probably bot are probably top ten both offensively and defensively. So there doesn't have to be give and take. There's probably times earlier in your career you're entering offseason feeling. Unstable place franchise wise. Do you still, even though non playoffs, enter this offseason still feeling like you guys are kind of in a stable place? Oh, I feel like there is some stability, but like I said, I mean, um, obviously no one's happy with the way that we ended the season, but um, obviously there's a lot more stability stability than there had been in the past. But at the end of the day, as a team, we have to, we have to get better. So um, you never know what can happen. Do you plan to watch the playoffs at this point? I mean, how, uh, how do you handle that? I've never been that type of person to just watch. So uh, sometimes when games are on and you're out eating, like they're they're on and there's nothing you can pretty much do about it. I'm not gonna sit there and keep my eyes closed. But uh, in the in the house, no, I I don't really put them on. Not too much. I mean, obviously I have guys that I grew up with, and sometimes I watch the games. But uh, guys that I played with in the past know that I'm not I'm not watching this. Obviously, you you will leave your club. That's an uncertain future. Just, what, what do you make of his value to the team and? and how important it would be to get him back? I mean, obviously, I think he was he, he was extremely big for us. Um, you know, people that watch us play know that he should be six men in the year. But um, at the end of the day, you know that this is a business. And I feel like what he what he gave to us in, this two, in the two years that he has been here, um, I feel like he showed his value, what he, what he can do for a team. And um, I mean, I'll be, I'm happy for him regardless if he's with us or, or he isn't. Um, and he knows that. But... Man, at the end of the day, this is this is a business. You can only play basketball for so long. Will you, be, you know, try to help convince him to come back? I mean, I know that you Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, for sure. But you know, uh, money talks. Yeah. 
like I said, you can't play this game for, forever. You know, we, we have a you have such a short window to play basketball. Obviously, not everybody's going to be Braun or, or, or CP and play 19, 20 years. So um, you have to be able to get paid whenever you can, obviously. And I mean, um, that's what Vince Carter told me. And he played 21, 22 years, 21 years. So, um, nah, man, Malik's, like I said, Malik's, Malik was great for us. Obviously, I would love to have him back, but, you know, I don't, I don't know what the future holds. Obviously fresh, but how do you reflect on the season and what steps do you think you guys need to take to continue to improve and make sure you get back to the playoffs on the Right now, you know, just got to take a couple of days, uh, decompress, and uh, think about it. You know, uh, we'll have our exit interviews with the coaches and the GMs, and we'll talk all about that in a couple of days. They seem to have easier time in the paint tonight, not going a little bit. What do you think about that? Uh, our focus was to limit the threes, you know, and make them drive. Uh, they've hurt us a lot uh, over the past five games of threes. And um, when they drove, you know, I feel like we kind of gave them a, too much of an easy lane to, to go downhill. I know you've taken a mentorship role with some of the younger guys. What do you make of just the ups and downs of a young player? I mean, Keegan and Keon have such great games against the Warriors yeah. and struggle tonight. What do you, I mean, you went through it as a young player. What do you make of just the ups and downs? Uh, you just got to stay uh, f- f- focused, you know, and, um, you know, never get too high, never get too low. You know, it's a long season, different matchups, different players, you know, and uh, you just got to try and be as consistent as you can, you know, because uh, that's what uh, the team needs from you. I know you guys aren't using it as an excuse. The Western Conference being as brutal and tough as it is, the 49-win mm-hmm. team and the Pelicans barely getting in. I guess what do you make of just playing in such a difficult conference every time? Yeah, um, I, I, don't, I don't feel it's an excuse. You know, we dropped many games that we should have won during the season, uh, and we definitely would have been in a, in, a, in a better position, you know, so it's kind of on us, and uh, today we couldn't get it done. You guys only lost two fewer games overall than last year, but obviously the season is very different. I mean, does this, did it feel like a step back this season? Uh, personally, like as a team, I feel like we got better. It's just we couldn't finish some games, you know. We dropped a couple. The West is a tougher, you know, and uh, we're, we're kind of, we kind of put ourselves in a bad situation uh, to make the play. Yeah. Offensively, you guys did. Um, did you feel that during the season, and why? Um, I, don't, I don't. I don't know the numbers. I believe our numbers are pretty similar. Everyone else got better. <laughs> so, um, but, but yeah, you know, um, I feel like last year we were more efficient overall. Everyone threw through the board, so maybe that has something to do with it. I don't know. You've talked about how big value to, to you guys. Just how valuable has he been, and, and what's your case to try to get him back here? To come? Uh, of course, you know, Malik's another playmaker on the court with Foxy, you know, so when we have two of those guys on the court at the same time, it makes it really dif- uh, difficult for your defenses to guard, you know, so um, he would definitely miss, you know, especially me as a big man. What was working with JaVale like as a veteran, both on the court and in the locker room as well? Uh, great, great veteran, big time, you know, um, helped everyone, you know, from me, Foxy, to all the way down to uh, the Chile guys, you know, um, always present, always uh, had his attitude, and uh, uh, held us uh, accountable for everything. What do you make of the defensive growth as a whole this season? That seems to be the biggest area of progress that you guys made. Uh, good. You know, I feel like uh, we definitely, um, since all-star break, our defense has, has has definitely improved a lot. You know, guys are getting more confident. Uh, we're allowed to be more physical, which I feel like helps helps our uh, type of personnel on, on our on our on our team. Can you compare the environment in this building tonight to the other times that you played here this season? Uh, definitely. You know, this was a do or die game, so. Obviously, the fans were definitely more into it, you know, and um, you definitely felt it. And what what's, what stood out to you about the way the Pelicans is um, just to be without uh, playing uh, Yeah, you know, um, very talented player. Um, when he's not playing, you know, they obviously shoot more threes. They're not attacking the paint as much. Um, they kind of move the ball more, so it kind of puts us in uh, longer rotations.